So we uh, now are going up the intercoastal a little ways here on our way up to Punta Gorda. We were in Fort Myers. We were in Fort Myers where we came in because we missed the offshore uh, entrance to Punta Gorda. So we had to come down and around Sanibel Island and tack back and forth all day yesterday, <laughs> which we sailed all day yesterday, back and forth, tacking. It took to go six miles. Uh, if you were just motoring with the diesel engine, you could have just kicked her on to 2,500, 3,000 RPMs and gone six miles in an hour. And uh, then you would have been in the entrance and your day would have been done. But because we have an electric motor and had we done that, it would have drained the battery basically because we would have had to have it at such a high RPM that we would only have maybe 20 minutes of range. Uh, so we couldn't even have done it with just the motor. Um, so instead, we didn't use the motor at all and we tacked back and forth across the bay uh, for about six hours. And uh, I made a post in this video, I'll post the little track that we had. I have a picture of our track. And you know, uh, it, was, it was an all day thing and you just have to get used to that if you're sailing. And now we're going up the intercoastal um, inside protected and we are sailing we've got we've got the jib up uh, and we just jibe back and forth the winds from behind almost directly behind and this is the intercoastal waterway and we do have the motor going to just help us out a little bit the motor is right now at about uh, 500 600 rpms and we're doing five we're doing five and a half uh, knots, so about what we would be doing uh, if we were motoring with the diesel motor. Um, and we could do this, we could do this for a couple of hours, uh, maybe three hours before we would have to kick on the generator and then uh, we could charge up. Actually, as we're going at a thousand RPMs, we're putting in about five amps into the uh, system. So. We could be motoring right now with the generator on and just charging up the batteries too. So that's another option that we have here uh, as long as you have wind in the intercoastal and that's the key. And I need to tighten up the jib. So uh, there we go, let's see here. Let's go ahead and do that. Pull out the main too, but I don't think we want to mess with that in here. Yeah, there's really no reason to do anything different. It's easy to handle the jib in this situation. Um, so, a little extra bonus footage for Mig on this voyage. I was going to be finished in Tampa, but I talked Norman into a little short offshore hop down here. And no, he said, Hey, I think we can make it. You want to go? I said, Okay, let's go. Yeah, it was. We were literally laying, we had just woke up, we we're laying in our berths, talking about what we were going to do that day since we had a couple layover days before I had to fly out. And we were talking about all the little jobs we could do on the boat. And I was just kind of casually scrolling through the weather. And it, I said, hey, we've got, uh, we got these 20 knot north winds blowing. They're just blowing us in the right direction towards Punta Gorda. Why don't we just go off 24 hours? We'll be there instead of wasting these two days sitting in a marina. And that was the discussion right there. And Norman said, okay, let's go. <laughs> He's like, let's do that. And so I contacted Richard, my buddy who does my weather. And I said, hey, I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do this. And I didn't ask him. I didn't say, hey, what do you think of the weather situation? And he uh, texted me back, I don't know, 15 minutes later, and he goes, well, you can do it. He said, but it's gonna be really spicy out there because the sea state is gonna be really high. He said, the, the weather's good, the wind is good, but I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about your sea state. 
And I just, as I do, just kind of went, oh, we'll be all right. Let's go. And Norman goes, yeah, let's go. So we went out there and then Norman was going, why are we doing this? Why, why did we do this? We didn't have to do this. And uh, I was fine. I was having fun all day until the evening. And then uh, my iPad rudely woke me up and hit me in the head. It flew off the shelf up above that it was wedged in up there. It flew off and nailed me right in the head when I was sound asleep. And I woke up and I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> And the wind was blowing 25, and the seas were giant, actually. They were really, really big at this point. Uh, no <laughs> Norman was in the cockpit holding on for dear life. And, uh, oh, there's another alarm. Go take the battery out. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, well, hey, I've got cell service here. So I looked at the, I looked at my weather on, on the Ventusky online, and I was like, uh-oh. We aren't going to be able to go in that inlet. And uh, I was right. But I'm glad that we didn't try. So so there you go. You've seen all that, I'm sure, on that other video. So if you haven't, click on that video. Check the video before this. It should be on that one. Uh, so this is Intercoastal Waterway 101. <laughs> yeah. no, I just There's 101. These guys zip past us. And... Uh, Oh, here comes a look at this little flat boat with all the speakers on it. They're like a band on a band on the run, man. Don't mind the AIS alarm. We were talking about alarms too. It's kind of funny. Like an alarm goes off, and we're, our first thing is, "Where's that alarm so we can take the battery out of it?" <laughs> Not. Why is that alarm going off? Maybe we should uh, find out why that alarm's going off and fix the problem. It's that damn alarm. Go take the battery out of that thing. Anyway, all right. Well, I'm gonna sign off here. I'll, uh, I'll, maybe I'll film when we dock. Norman docking procedures. <laughs> 102, 103. All right. Here we are, sailing past Cabbage Key. There's a little marina here this place you look at all these uh, little islands are pretty well bare of vegetation hurricane Ian really uh, wreaked havoc on this area but that's a little happening marina right there look at all the boats in there they're making some money Wow I guess there's a restaurant in there and pretty cool. I think that would be a cool thing to own, something like that. <clears throat> and Heavy May is still sailing up the intercoastal. It's kind of a cool little place over there as well. We've slowed down a bit. Watch Norman turn on the motor. Norman. Watch Norman turn on the motor. Because we want to get there tonight in time for cheeseburgers. <laughs> here it is. This is all, all it takes right here. Okay, we'll start here he Click it again. There it goes. Click it again. Click it again. Click it again. There it goes. Now we're motoring. Look at that. 900. 900 RPMs. Can't even hear it. A little bit. You hear a little tiny hum. She's got the wind in her teeth now, baby. I'm glad we did this little uh, last journey on the boat. I wasn't really keen on going up the intercoastal today, but uh, Norman really was. And so he did. And I'm very happy that we did now. It's been a nice sail. And I will be happy as long as I get my cheeseburger tonight. If I don't get my cheeseburger, yeah, then I won't be so happy. But I fly out tomorrow, heading home. And the last stretch of the ICW is out across Charlotte Bay here, up to Punta Gorda. 
and we have full sails up. Well, except for the staysail, which we've stopped putting up because it's a pain in the butt. Because the not because the staysail's a pain in the butt, just because we don't have it properly rigged on this boat. It needs to be self-tacking, really. And uh, his sheets don't even come all the way back to the cockpit. They come to midship cleats. And somebody has to run up all the time, so. So here we are. Sailing. Beautiful day. We're gonna have to tack a couple times to get up the bay. That's okay. Well, nothing like yesterday. <laughs> I'll take this over that any day. So, in my opinion, this is a great way to end this uh, little voyage on Evie May. Nice. And uh, we're uh, going to be there in, I don't know, a few hours and have some cheeseburgers. I know. Not keto. That's okay. Signing off for now. Here we go. Sun's going down pretty quick here. We're almost to the marina in Punta Gorda. That was our original final destination for this trip. And we're both really happy to be here. Norman especially. Norman, what was the significance for you of getting to Punta Gorda specifically? Because when I wanted to start my journey, I was going to start right here and then just go south and around. And Well, I was just going to go up the East Coast, but now Topher's pretty much talked me into just shooting over to the Bahamas for a while. So I'll do that. Before hurricane season starts, I'll get back over to Florida and then head up the East Coast. So that was the reason. So the... The thing is, when you're working on a boat like this, like Norman has for four years, yeah, four years. There's, there's something that you have to you have to have something to keep you driving, keep pushing to keep going back out to the boat and and do the work that needs to be done on it. It's it's a lot of work, and it, that's at the beginning it feels like there's just too much, and so you uh, kind of escape occasionally into your brain and you imagine where you're gonna be with that boat um i like on salt and tar if you guys watch that channel garrett you know when he was in the winter time and he was working on building that boat from scratch like they did one of the things he said was someday i'm gonna be sipping a margarita in the tropics on this boat and that got him through the cold months and the tons of work that he had to do and I totally get that and that's what Norman is saying here is this spot specifically even though we had to backtrack to come back up to Punta Gorda he was farther south when we were down there but for him this is a milestone moment because he thought of Punta Gorda this is where his cousin lives and and he thought of someday I'm going to be in Punta Gorda and I'm going to be starting my cruising life on Evie May. And uh, here we are. We're coming right up to Punta Gorda right now. We're gonna dock at the marina. And I'm gonna fly out tomorrow. We made it, and it wasn't always easy. There were spicy times. It was a little spicy, we'll say more than once. <laughs> a little spicy. But we both had a great time, and, uh, and that's another thing is we both have now you know, we were friends before, but had never met. We were friends on the phone, on emails, texting, both doing the same work on our boats and the same kind of boat. And we always felt kind of a, a kinship and we always felt like our boats, we call them Christmas sisters because his is red and white and mine is green and white. And uh, now we're like brothers, sorta. We, uh, we've had a great time and I've spent a lot of time offshore with people and I don't think uh, I've rarely spent 
this much time offshore or sailing with somebody that uh, at the end I would say uh, I'll sail anywhere in the world with that person and uh, yeah I had a great time and I want to thank Norman specifically for this wonderful opportunity that I had to get away from uh, the Pacific Northwest and the cold for a little while and come out here and get back offshore on the same little boat as MIG. So thank you, Norman. You're welcome, buddy. I enjoyed it. All right, signing off. I'm gonna go ahead and film us coming into the dock and that'll be the end of this video. Wow. Looks like there's a lot of people there. I wonder if they're all waiting for Norman. <laughs> That'd be new, having somebody waiting for you when you arrive somewhere. No, that's not true. We had Amy and Merrill waiting for us in Blaine. Thank you, by the way. And we had Richard and Shinoa waiting for us in Hawaii when we showed up in Hawaii. Thank you very much for that, Richard and Shinoa. Nothing like having an audience. <laughs> That's right. They're all gonna look at your little North C27 though and go, I want that little boat. It's been to hell and back. It has not. Oh my God. It's been on a spicy ride. You'll be fine. Remember, you want to go into a dock as fast as you want to hit a dock. Exactly. And we are in C2. Yeah, you want C2, so it's over there. I was thinking, right. Huh. C2. There's some island packets. There's an island packet, look at that. Pretty boat. C2 is going to be down there because it's small. It's way down there. All right, I think everything's... Yep. And remember you have a port walk in reverse, so it'll walk you over to the dock when you put it in reverse. Okay, start reversing. There you go, reverse. Nice. Okay, forward a little. Here you go. Reverse. 
Rangers. All right. You can use those aft lines. There should be a line over there and a line over there. If you want oh, to. already on it? They're a little muddy on the ends, but. Here's a spring. This one here? Okay. Give me a little reverse, just a tad there. Oh, it's... Well... What's that? You got it on? Oh, good. I think I think we got this one there. I think you need more stuff back here. Fortunately, you don't anchor, or you anchor all the time. Yeah, that's the best part of that. Okay. think this gives you a little better pull over here but I think we're fine right here huh okay go ahead and tie it up there yeah that'll work Say goodbye. No, we didn't kill him. <laughs> no, it was fine. All right. <laughs>